Do you have a Next.js site but struggle with data management? Well, React Query automates fetching, caching, and background refetching, making your app fast, reliable, and easy to maintain. A lot of people don't understand how to use React Query with Next.js, so in this video, I will teach you exactly that. So let's dive in. Before we dive in, I need to ask you, do you want to learn topics like algorithms and data structures through hands-on interactive lessons? Well, today's sponsor, Brilliant, can help you exactly with that. I truly believe that the best way to master challenging concepts is by actually doing, and Brilliant makes that possible. Their platform isn't about passively watching videos. It's all about building real understanding through interactive problem-solving lessons. I've been blown away by how their algorithm and data structures course reshaped my approach to tackling tough problems. Not only that, but this course specifically can help set up the foundational skills for you to pass your first software engineering interview. And here's the bonus. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Plus, you can grab 20% off an annual premium subscription if you decide to continue your journey. So, if you're ready to transform the way you learn, click the link in the description or go to brilliant.org slash pedrotech and dive into Brilliant today. Okay, so the first thing you need to do in order to use React Query is, first of all, obviously have a Next.js project already installed. Now, I installed my project by running uh, npx create next app and then I followed all the instructions if you haven't done that if you don't know how to do that uh, then just run that command and you'll generate a project like this but my assumption is that you already have a project in next.js or already know how to build a next.js project you just want to know how to integrate next.js with react query so to do that we have to install react query inside of our project so I'm going to run over here, npm install, and we're going to call at 10 stack dash, actually slash react query. Perfect. This should install react query. We should see that this is the version of react query that I'm using. So uh, make sure that uh, if you're watching this tutorial in the future, you're aware that there are different versions of each of the dependencies I'm using. And now that we have installed that, we want to come to our project over here. Now, if you are familiar with React Query, you might know that we have to set up what is known as a query client. And this query client is going to configure React Query in our project. And we're going to enable that in our project using a component called the query client provider. Now, in order to do that, we want to go to somewhere in our app that is going to wrap around our entire app and define uh, that we want to enable React Query for that specific app. Now, there's a problem. That place is the layout component. This, uh, the entry point of our entire Next.js app. And in a Next.js app router uh, project, you typically have this layout.tsx, which is at the root of the app directory. And this is a great place to initialize it because uh, all the child components will have access to React Query. However, because React Query is a client-side tool, because it manages the state within the browser, we need to ensure that the relevant file is set up as a client component. And as you might know, by default, Next.js's layout components are uh, server components. So we can't actually define the React Query query client in here, and we can't directly pass the provider in here because those are client side things. And this is a server component. And this is where a lot of people who've tried uh, creating or integrating Re uh, React Query with Next.js have managed to fail. So the way we do this is by creating our own uh, wrapped component, uh, which is going to be called the query client components. So I'm going to create a folder over here called components. And let's actually call it not query client, let's call it query provider .tsx. And this component is going to be a client component. So we're going to make sure to say that this is using client at the top, then we want to export default, a function called the query provider. And since it's a wrapped component, we need to define that we are going to accept children as props. And let's create here just quickly an interface uh, for the props. So since it's children, it will just be equal to a react node. So react dot react node. 
And then let's define how this component is going to look like. Like I said, this whole component, its main purpose is just generating this thing called the query client and returning the query client provider. This is a component that you can import from React Query and helps us tell React Query where in our app we want to enable React Query, which in this case will be in our entire app. Now, inside of this, we'll just return the children. And it is giving us some red squiggly lines because we do have to initialize our query client and pass it over here. So how do we define our query client? Well, the best way to do this with Next.js is by creating a state and setting equal to use state. And then inside of here, we're going to put a callback function that is going to call this uh, class called query client that we can import from React Query. And we just define it by saying new and then query client. And this will return back the actual value of the query client that we can just pass over here. Now, the reason why we are creating this uh, instance of the query client inside of a state is because this will ensure that the data is not shared between different users and requests while still only creating the query client once per component lifecycle. So it's a bit different, even the whole setup of having to create this in its own provider component, uh, it's a bit different from how you would in a non Next.js project. Now, all we have to do is just pass this query provider around here. And we should have enabled react query in our project, I just have to import it as well at the top. Perfect. So we have successfully created our query provider, we declared it as a client component, we defined this at the top level of our project. And we wrapped any children component that is going to exist in our project with the react query client provider. So now what do we do? Well, let's start fetching some data. So in React Query, we can come to whatever component we want to fetch data on. Uh, in this case, let's fetch it on the initial page in uh, our Next.js project. I'm just going to delete all of this, which is the uh, boilerplate code that comes with React with Next.js. So I'm just going to save this. And instead of here, we want to make sure that this is a client component. So I'm going to use client at the top because by default, this is indeed a server component. And like I said, uh, React Query is a client side tool, then we want to import at the top, a hook from at 10 stack React Query. And the way you fetch data in React Query is by using two different hooks, you can either get data, so fetch data using the use query hook. And you can either you can mutate data using the use mutation hook. So in HTTP uh, method terminology, Use query would be used for get requests, and use mutation would be used for uh, put requests, delete requests and post requests. So in this case, let's use the use query hook to fetch some data. So how do we do that? Well, somewhere here, let's create a function that is going to uh, fetch the data that we want. So I'm going to say fetch posts. And to fetch posts, in this case, I'm going to be using this uh, dummy data that you can access from this publicly available API called the JSON placeholder API. I basically use it for almost all of my videos because it's very simple for me to explain using it. If you go to this URL, it will just return a list of objects that you can test uh, making API requests to. So we're going to uh, make an API request to this URL over here, where we're going to be able to get this uh, list of fake posts. So let's create this function. And since we're using TypeScript, we do have to specify what this will return. This is going to return a promise with the list of posts. So let's create here a type that is going to uh, let's actually call it a type, let's make it a type is going to be called post. And it's going to contain the data that we know we're going to get back. So we know we're going to get back a user ID, an ID, a title and a body. So let's define that. So we'll say user ID is a number, then ID is also a number, then title is a string, and body is a string as well. Perfect. Now we'll just say that this function returns a promise 
that is a list of posts. Perfect. Now inside of here, let's say const response and set this equal to await and we'll fetch this URL that we have for the API. So I'll just paste that over here. This should return back the list of data. And below here, we're just going to actually let me make this response. And we're just going to return the response dot JSON. Now, if you're not familiar with React Query, you might be asking, aren't we fetching data with React Query? Why are we creating a fetch function that is going to use the fetch API to do that? Well, you're fetching the data with whatever tools you want to use, such as the fetch API or Axios, for example. But when you give that data or that method of fetching data to React Query, React Query will handle all of the rest, which mainly focuses on, for example, dealing with the state of your server data in the client side, also dealing with how your UI should react to this data. So they'll give us information about whether or not the data is pending or if there was an errors and so on. If you want to go in, in an in-depth React Query tutorial, not specifically for Next.js, I literally just posted one last week and it should be appearing on the screen right now. But this video is mostly focused on just showing you guys how to integrate it with Next.js. Then after we create the fetch post function, we can very easily come here and we can call the use query hook. The use query hook requires us to pass in an object inside of here, which two th with two things. The first one is a query key, which is just a key, or we'll put it into a list, but this is a key that is going to help us identify, uh, uniquely identify this query that we're doing, that we're making, so that we can later on do things with it, like invalidate it and access its cache and so on. So let's call it posts just to give it a uniquely a unique identifier. Then we also want to pass a query function. And this query function is going to be the fetch posts function that we just generated. Then, like I said, we can get data inside of here. So we can get the data that we get back from this request. We can also get any errors that happened. And also if the data is loading. Now by getting all of that, we can uh, deal with uh, the states in which there was an error and or if the data is loading before we even return the UI. So for example, over here, I can check if the data is loading, we can just return a p tag saying loading and three dots, you'll see that for a second, every time I refresh this, it will say loading, and then it will disappear because the data will have been successfully fetched. If there is an error, we can also instead of just using this error object over here, we can also get the is error boolean which will literally do the same thing as the is loading, but for erroring. So we can check to see if if there was an error. And if there was, we can actually get the specific error message by saying error, and then displaying the error object that we got from here as an error type for using TypeScript, and then accessing the specific message that we get back. Now let's display the data that we get back from this API request. To do that, let's go into our UI and we can easily just say data map through it. And since we specified over here in our fetch posts function, what this expects to return, we should have access to the specific type definitions for our uh, data. So we'll have posts, right? We can define this as post also get a a key over here. And we can return a div that will include um, inside of here information, for example, we can define a p tag with the title. So we'll say title, and then we'll say post dot title, then we can do the same thing for the uh, content, we can say content, and we can say post dot content, just realize uh, actually, it's not content, right? It's body. See, type definitions is good because it literally uh, told me I was wrong. So I'm going to say body over here. Perfect. I'll also actually make this into an h4 tag because I think the title should be um, more apparent. So yeah, the last thing we need to do is only just pass the key over here. And you should see that we successfully uh, fetched data inside of a Next.js project using the React Query library. Now, despite everything that I mentioned in the beginning on why I think it's great to use React Query, um, there are some scenarios in which it might not be ideal for you to use. For example, with Next.js, we obviously can have server components. And in a server component, 
you can, for example, directly uh, access a database by using some sort of ARM inside of the component, right? So if I was using Prisma, for example, and I wanted to get the posts data inside of the Prisma database, I could actually uh, come here and say const posts equals to await Prisma dot, uh, obviously, I don't have that right here. But you can you get what I mean, right? I could access directly the ARM that I'm using and make requests to our database directly over here without the need uh, for an API that I generate or an API that is outside of the project. So in that case, it might not be ideal. And also, if your site is rarely needs client side data fetching or caching, like a small site without any interaction, you definitely don't need react query. I think react query is extremely important. And a lot of people for some reason think that it's not something that you can use with Next.js. I've seen this question so many times on subreddit uh, on Reddit's or on Twitter. Uh, but it's just not the case. I use React Query most of the time when I make Next.js projects. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Again, this is not an in-depth tutorial on React Query. It's just a video on how to integrate it with Next.js. If you want to see my in-depth React Query tutorial, I'll put the link for it in the description. If you want to check out the code for this video, it's all going to be in the description. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I would massively appreciate it. And yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.